All right, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to solve some barometer problems or working through some example problems. Um, there are basically two variations of the barometer problem that you will encounter. One will be that you're given the atmospheric pressure and you'll be asked to find what the height of mercury will be inside the barometer, or you'll be given the height of the mercury and you'll be asked to calculate the atmospheric pressure. So two varieties of basically the same formula. Um, let's just talk briefly about this. I did make a video explaining the barometer problem. I'll put a link to that in the top right corner, but um, you can also just get the quick recap right here. So when we're in um, pressure at a given depth of a fluid, we'll have the same pressure. So here we have atmospheric pressure pressing down, and that's going to be the same as we go across the fluid column like this. So whatever the atmospheric pressure is, will also be equal to uh, the pressure here, but we have a fluid column above it. Plus we have this mercury uh, vapor up here, which is almost negligible. It's basically a vacuum up here. It's so the, the pressure in there is so small that it's uh, going to be effectively zero for us. But the column of fluid up here will change based on the, the pressure that we have uh, in the atmosphere. So we need to take that into account for this as well when calculating atmospheric pressure if we're given the height. So we'll call that the height of the fluid column above this point. Let's just call this point here P. And so P, this is the pressure at this point here, right at the bottom. Uh, this is equal to P atmosphere, it's the same thing. And it's also, because there's a column of fluid above it, this is also equal to the pressure above. So the pressure at this point, which is PV, plus rho, uh, and this the, the fluid in here is mercury, so rho GH, where H was the height. But due to the nature of how barometers are constructed, which I talked about in the previous video, the, the pressure, the vapor pressure in here is essentially zero. It's so negligible that it won't affect our problem. So we can cancel this out and say that this is just equal to zero. So that our P atmosphere is just equal to rho GH. Okay, so let's run through an example where we're given atmospheric pressure at sea level. And we've been told that the atmospheric pressure at sea level is 101.3 kilopascals. So if we're asked to find what is the height of the barometer, the, the column fluid uh, in millimeters, all we have to do is apply this formula here. So we have 101, 300 pascals is going to be equal to the density of mercury, which is 13.6 times 10 to the 3 kilograms per meter squared, sorry, meters cubed. Um, and we multiply this by acceleration due to gravity. And then we multiply that again by our height. So the height is the only unknown in this equation. So all we have to do is just rearrange. So we have height is equal to P atmosphere divided by the product of the other two numbers. And we can really simply find that the height of mercury is going to be in uh, units of meters first. So it'll be 0 0.759 meters. But we're looking for this typically in units of millimeters or, or tor as well, is as, as it's sometimes called. Um, but this would be 700 and 59 millimeters, which would be a typical reading around sea level. Uh, okay, so let's do another one where we're at, let's say, Everest Base Camp, which is 5,364 meters above sea level, so it has probably a much lower air pressure. And let's say that we've been given the information that the barometer is sitting at 401 millimeters, and we're asked to calculate what is the atmospheric pressure at this point. So we would use the same formula. We would just have P atmosphere is equal to all the same stuff, rho G H, rho being the density of mercury. And we are looking for atmospheric pressure. So we just got to plug in everything that we have. So it's 13.6 times 10 to the three kilograms per meter cubed times acceleration due to gravity times the height in meters, which is 0 0.401 meters, that is 401 millimeters. And when we crunch all of that in the calculator, we're going to get 53,000, uh, it's about 499 pascals, uh, which is just equal to 53, let's call it 0.5 kilopascals. So it would be a much lower atmospheric pressure at such a high elevation, and then the barometer We'll be able to give us that information when we see such a low reading in the, in the height of the mercury column. So there you go. There are two common ways uh, to spin this problem, but hopefully that helps to see it in an example.